we're going to go out into space in a vacuum in an environment that is totally different than anything on planet Earth. Here at the NBL, neutrally buoyant in the water is the closest we can come to being in space. This episode of Boing Boing Video is made possible by WePC.com. Okay, I gotta go this way. To boldly swim where no reporter has swum before. Thank you. That's me in NASA's six million gallon pool that they use to train astronauts. They call it the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. Okay, thanks. I'm here at the invitation of John Grunsfeld, the most experienced Hubble spacewalker of all. They call him the Hubble Hugger. Hey, look who we found here. It's the Hubble Hugger himself, John <laughs> Grunsfeld. Hello, How Miles. Are you, pal? I'm doing great. So, I'm actually inside the Hubble Space Telescope now. And John's going to show us a few tricks of the trade. First of all, how's it going today? Uh, it's going great so far. Uh, before you got down here, I went ahead and removed a couple of these screws on the outside of the advanced camera for surveys. The advanced camera for surveys died uh, January, a little over a year ago. And this was the workhorse of the Hubble Space Telescope in terms of taking those great pictures that we all know and love. So it, it's dead now, and we're going to try and bring it back to life. Now this is the fastener capture plate. And the key feature of this is it has a plexiglass windows and over each screw is a hole. And the hole is big enough that a screwdriver can fit through it, but just barely, but not so big that a screw can come out through it. So I'm going to release all the screws and they're going to float around in these windows and won't come out on the telescope. This repair was never intended to be done. This is all something we figured out after the failure. Uh, none of these screws were intended to come out on orbit. And once we get the cover plate off, we have to remove circuit cards. How many times have you done this? This is about the probably sixth time I've done it. Okay, I just felt like I went in there. but it doesn't look like it came out. This is why we train. And these first five are really the hardest ones. Once I get past these, then I'm uh, into the ones I can do with my power tool, and they go a lot quicker. The trick is to still try and feel the cruciform engage the tip of the screwdriver. Otherwise, you might strip ahead, and that's something that we really don't want to do. We do have a drill that we could drill out the screws just in case. And all that inside the Hubble Space Telescope would not be a lot of fun. Okay, if you want to swim under the yeah, light shade, underneath. come on in. Okay, I'm not hurting anything, I hope. Yep. Okay. Okay, so you can practice spinning that a couple of times just to get a feel for the trigger. Okay, and if you want to do those two right there, it's... Uh, bad. That's all there is to it. Not bad. Tool time in space. Kind of a zen-like thing where you only worry about the screw that you're actually on. That's it. Now I can use this well, there's a flashlight to make sure that all the screws are out. If I have any question about when I can kind of tap it. Got to make sure the ones you did are all out. Make sure you did a great job. All right. Well, that's it for the power tool. Try to, try to describe what it's like working in those gloves. Well, it's very much, you know, I grew up on the south side of Chicago, and it's like trying to work on your car wearing a couple of big sets of winter gloves that are brand new and still very stiff. Uh, so you, 
you can squeeze and get some good feeling, but you can't hold it there for very long before your fingers get tired. Of course, inside it's nice and toasty warm, just like those winter gloves. Are you comfortable in that suit? You know, I've spent thousand hours or so in this suit here in the pool and about 35 hours in space in the suit, so there are times that I don't even remember that I'm in the suit. Right. Uh, you know, I, have, I have a fantastic office here at the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. I guess the good news or the bad news is I have to wear a suit. Fortunately, no tie. <laughs> imagine your perfect PC. Now imagine top engineers and innovators working to make that dream PC a reality. Intel and ASUS invite you to join the conversation about the world's first community-designed laptop at WePC.com. What does that thing do? And this is going to allow us the uh, leverage to uh, take the cards out. Pull for everything in space, huh? Yep. All of these are custom. Okay, so this funny-looking contraption is the tool I'll use to remove the cards. Oh, well, it's a one-use tool, huh? Yep. Now it actually is set so I can remove any of the four cards. Now it's grounded. So I'm going to temporarily store that in my bag of tricks. The hardest part is keeping track of everything, isn't it? Yep. No, I'm keeping everything in the in the bag. And I won't have gravity to to help me out. That's where having a partner makes a big difference. I can put the PGT, the big power tool on here, and with over 300 pounds of force, drag it out. We're going to see what happens. And we got lucky today. That's what I'm hoping to happen in, in orbit. OK, so now I'm just cleaning up all these tethers, because the next big step is to look inside and make sure there's nothing wrong in there. You know, we've been monkeying around with cards pulled in and out and tiny screws. So this is kind of a moment of truth to make sure the new box will actually go in. For every hour an astronaut spends on a real spacewalk in orbit, they spend 10 hours here in this pool learning how to do their job in space. And then after we're all done, they'll turn the power on and we'll see if the lights go on. Or in this case, if the camera turns on. Give us a sense of how valuable this training is. We're going to go out into space in a vacuum, in an environment that is totally different than anything on planet Earth. Here at the NBL, neutrally buoyant in the water is the closest we can come to being in space. So this is our most valuable training. So now the big question is, will all this underwater practice pay off in space? No one hopes so more than the Hubble Hugger.